Welcome to the Observation Post, 24th of June. Um, unfortunately this week, some tragic events. A policeman has been shot and killed in New Zealand. Um, it doesn't happen very often here. Um, somebody mentioned the other day it was uh, 11 years since a policeman had been killed in the line of duty in New Zealand. Uh, he was shot in his vehicle by some scumbag drug guy. Uh, drugs involved and no, no doubt a gang affiliate or, or gang links. Uh, very sad. Constable Matthew Hunt, 28 years old. And uh, he was shot and killed and another policeman, his partner, was wounded. And uh, unfortunately, uh, a prohibited firearm was used. No surprises there. Um, of course, we're supposed to be a lot safer now. Government spent over $100 million taking the guns off everybody. Uh, problem is, of course, they took them off the law-abiding citizens, pub punished us, and... Uh, the rat bags, well, of course, no, none of them were going to hand them in. And it was incredible. I remember last year, the Deputy Police Commissioner standing there and, and, and telling the press, and we expect the gangs to comply as well. And the gangs turned around and said, we're not handing ours in. And uh, that was the end of that. It's like, you mean just if they'd spent half that money, $50 million, on getting the weapons off the street, Illegal weapons, proper illegal weapons, gang members. Okay, I'm pretty sure this rat bag that uh, killed the policeman wasn't a member of the uh, Deerstalkers Club or anything like that. Pretty sure he was a member of some gang or an affiliate to one. Very sad, and I feel for the family of that policeman and, of course, all the police. Uh, I was in the big green machine, and uh, I'm sure it's a similar atmosphere in the police, big blue machine. And, uh, you know, it's one of their own, so very sad to see, um, especially at, at the moment where there's a big spotlight on the police. And now I do see that uh, also this week some ratbag vandal tried to jump on a bandwagon. Uh, he was caught downtown Auckland uh, graffitiing, spray painting uh, some property, and uh, he ran off and resisted arrest. And uh, he was tackled and subdued and ended up going to hospital with minor lacerations and things. Now, of course, there was a video done by his friends. Um, but naturally, <laughs> the only video that was released was halfway through uh, the assault or, or the, uh, the arrest where the guy was on the ground and there was police all over the place supporting each other. So, uh, of course, you know, that only shows a part of the story. And the guy had the cheek to say that uh, he was uh, profiled just because he was Māori. <laughs> I think he was profiled, <laughs> but not because Māori. I think he was profiled because he had a spray can in his hand and he was painting a wall. And he just happened to be Māori. Uh, so, a bit very cheeky of him to try and uh, jump on this bandwagon that's happening around the world at the moment and, and uh, weasel out of, of what... Uh, what it, what he had done, so, you know, take responsibility. If you're going to do that sort of thing, you take responsibility, get caught, you take it like a man, not some sort of weaselly, I don't know. But that's what you expect from these sorts of people. No respect for other people's property, no respect for the law. Best advice I can give anybody, police tell you to uh, do something, you do it. Now... I've been shook down a couple of times over the years in New Zealand and overseas by police, and I didn't like it. And uh, so I can, I mean, it's fair to say, if you get picked on, you know, if you're a, on the receiving end of profiling, uh, perhaps based on skin colour and where you are, then I imagine that you will be quite resentful. Uh, when I was shook down... Uh, in central Auckland actually some years or many years ago I was with a bunch of my friends uh, we're Pākehā, Māori, Pacific Islanders and uh, we all got shook down I didn't like it for a long time I actually resented the police after, over that one incident one incident was enough for me to lose respect for the police but you know uh, hindsight and as we mature 
uh, you can see see some reasoning behind it but at the time especially if you're young um, yeah you will be resentful about it so but you know if you're gonna resist then expect <laughs> expect to take a bit of damage you know so I would just say policeman tells you to do something just comply do it you can sort out all the, the uh, why's and wherefores afterwards but uh, stay in one piece and do as you're told and if they do go too heavy on you well there is a, a process for that uh, probably, I'm sure it's not perfect but uh, there is a process and uh, you know police will get censured will get charged we have seen it in the past doesn't happen very often um, but just remember you know even police have bad days so they might have stuff going on in their life and it carries over to the work it's a pretty thankless task they have but of course everybody moans and groans but when you need them you know now all of a sudden you know police are your best friends so you know they have got a thankless job to do and uh, I would just suggest that we support the police a little bit more and remember New Zealand's not uh, in other part of the country, New Zealand's unique. New Zealand's New Zealand. Our police generally are unarmed, and arming the police actually would not have saved uh, old poor Constable Hunt last uh, last week. Um, they chased the car, lost the car. The guy crashed. They followed up, come across the crash, come around the corner, come around the crash scene. The guy bailed out and unloaded on the car as they were pulling up. So. Even if they had been armed, they wouldn't have had a chance to uh, to draw or anything like that. Of course, the guy was caught very quickly. Uh, it is New Zealand. You know, <laughs> nobody stays on the run for too long in New Zealand. We're too small. So uh, anyway, that was good to see. He's now behind bars. Oh, the accused is behind bars. Sorry. Uh, but you know, what for? Why? You know. So you had some drugs, you might have done a couple of years for time for the drugs or something like that. And now you've taken somebody's life, you know, over over what, you know. The stupid. Anyway, that is very sad. But not sad the tag is arrested. And I just see in Australia, speaking, uh, we're talking about last week with the uh, statues. I see they're not mucking around. A couple of uh, vandals were arrested in Australia defacing a, a statue of Captain Cook in Sydney. Okay, I think they're spray painting or something. Boom, onto them, arrested. Shut them down. Okay, none of this pandering to them nonsense. You know, you can have your, you know, we're all in lockdown, but you can have your, uh, you can have your protest down the main street of Auckland. You know, that's that's a cause I I I I choose to um, agree with. So you guys have your protest. Just don't think about doing a protest if you're not happy with the new gun laws which they just bought in recently. You know, that's unacceptable. Yeah, the rules are for everybody, remember? For our own good, for our own good. Anyway, new gun laws. They've done the second round and they've all been passed. Okay, more restrictions. More 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 punishing the old law abiding citizen. But you know. It's all for the greater good. I'm just so glad they're doing our thinking for us. Other news. Uh, remember last week we were talking about the posters going up all over the place of our glorious leader. I see the uh, somebody must have complained to the uh, uh, Electoral Commission. And they've been banned or it be taken down. And uh, so, fantastic. And rightly so. I mean, it is fan art, I suppose, but still. We're close to getting close to an election. And uh, definitely propaganda promoting. So uh, the Electoral Commission, good on you. I mean, that is a big part of your job is policing, advertising, and stuff, and and, and promoting of uh, political parties. And uh, so kudos to you guys for actually having the balls to go and <laughs> go and actually do something. Um, not blind to the. <laughs> not blind, not falling under the spell of our glorious leader. So fantastic! That was good work there. Now, uh, just going on another thing. If you're aware of Twitter, I'm suppose sure everybody's aware of it. It's, uh, it's, I think it's days are numbered. But anyway, it's a small. You can put little 
messages out there and links and stuff into the into the interweb with your account. Um, it's pretty much just a cesspool of freaking hate and and uh, yeah, false news for sure. Um, but you know, it's freaking it's a horrible place actually. I've got an account and I I used it about three years ago and then I for a couple of tweets and then I haven't used it since. It's just a horrible, horrible place. And, uh, but for some reason, it's quite big in America. All the uh, political people, all the activists, and all the activists for sure, they've got accounts and they put their stuff out there and you know makes them feel good, I suppose. But anyway, of course, uh, just like a lot of those platforms in America, YouTube, Facebook, of course, Twitter now also, very heavy-handed and biased when it comes to uh, policing, what goes out on their on their platform. And of course, leading leading left rather than centre, being objective. Okay, um, they're pushing their narrative. They want their narrative to shine, and push down and subdue any other, anything that they don't agree with. And so, a lot of uh, right of centre, and further right to be fair, but a lot of right of centre accounts have been banned. Uh, Katie Hopkins, for example, she just got banned the other day. She was a beacon. Uh, she was a beacon in England, anyway. Trying to trying to save that place, her and Tommy uh, Robinson, uh, people. Like that. So they're slowly getting de de platformed by all the big, by all the big social media platforms. Now she's morphed over to another one, uh, similar to, to Twitter called uh, what's it called? Parler, P-A-R-L-E-R, Parler.com. So uh, as long as you don't sort of preaching hate and violence, there's no censorship, which is how it should be. Say your piece, say your opinion, your political opinion, but, you know, that's how it should be, shouldn't it? Don't we, don't we live in a free country, free world, free speech? Well, I just remember your free speech might be changing very soon, because Andrew Little's having a good look at the Bill of Rights, and he wants to change some stuff. Maybe some blanket changes and very vague descriptions of... Uh, a free speech and hate speech, which could be just whatever they decide as hate speech, if it doesn't fit what they, uh, what narrative they're pushing. So, and I'm going to keep a good eye on that. So yes, at uh, Parler, that's one uh, replacement for Twitter, and then we've also got uh, MeWe, which is kind of like a Facebook replacement. So they're not selling uh, all these new platforms. Their big pictures that they're not selling your data, uh, you can pretty much say what you want within reason, and uh, so it's going to be hard for them to crack in, I mean, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, they're massive, and uh, we've seen in the past that uh, other options have struggled against them, basically because of the, the amount of users these, these big, these bigger platforms have, so we'll see what happens there, but uh, Parler for Twitter, MeWe for Facebook. There's a couple of other type Facebooky type ones. Um, Bitshoot for a YouTube replacement. If you're not happy with YouTube, you can go to Bitshoot. Although Bitshoot's, and I've got an account there. It is it is fairly right leaning. Um, Coco, what's the other? Coco Scope. But it's more like a soft porny type thing rather than anything political or interesting. Uh, so there are, there are other options out there. The downside is, they, of course, they don't have anywhere near the amount of users of the big ones. So, but anyway, Parler's worth looking at if you do Twittery stuff, if you're into that sort of thing. Um, I, opened, I did open up an account yesterday, but you know. So if you're wondering where, if you haven't heard from Katie Hopkins for a while, it's because she's been banned from Twitter, so she's still got YouTube. She'll be hanging on <laughs> with a thread to YouTube, but uh, she's anyway. She's off to uh, Parlor, and uh, you know, I suggest you go over there and have a look if that's your thing. So, yeah. I've been used from New Zealand. Uh, there's a new political party started up, the New Zealand Public Party, started by uh, Billy uh, Kahika, TK Junior. Uh, he's a muso. Uh, but he also does does a lot of events and stuff. He spent a lot of time in, uh, in events, marketing, stuff like that. You anyway, know, he started a new party this week, 
and like like four or five days ago, and it's taken off. Okay, and his he's trying to uh, get New Zealand back, get New Zealand back, and unite some of these smaller parties. So he's uh, centre right, I believe. I haven't really seen uh, what he stands for, but he's definitely uh, put out there that he wants to uh, unify the if he can unify some of those more uh, conservative smaller parties into a bigger voice, which is, which is probably what we need. As soon as you get uh, more than one small party of, of one leaning or another, then you're splitting that vote. So if we look at the uh, look at the uh, centre-right ACT party, the New Conservatives, um, of course I won't even say New Zealand First anymore, but New Conservatives ACT Party, and there's a few other small ones, the South Island Independence Movement, stuff like that. It splits your vote, so um, I guess he's trying to unify the conservative uh, right into uh, maybe one voice and uh, at least have a chance during the election. So very interesting to watch. That's the New Zealand Public Party. I'll put a link down below. It'll be down there somewhere. And uh, you'll, be, you'll see. You can check out what he's all about. So... Anyway, that's about it for this week. Um, I'm going to do release another video later in the week. Uh, interview with uh, Steve Reed. Uh, he's working with uh, troubled people in Christchurch. People have had run-ins with the law or problems at home and stuff. He's going to be very interesting uh, to talk to. I'm looking forward to that. So that'll be up uh, later in the week. So. So looking at the US, uh, Seattle again, Chaz has now become CHOP. I'm not even sure what CHOP stands for, Capitol Hill something, something, anyway. And uh, predictably, there's been a shooting death in there. One guy was killed and another one was seriously injured. And they wouldn't even let uh, emergency services in to treat the guy, to get him out for, took ages to get him out. And uh, so one of them, the one that survived, is actually out, but in hospital, critical condition. So there's your socialist utopia. No police. That's what you wanted. Well, there you go. No police. It's not utopia. It's freaking chaos and anarchy. And that's what most of these protesters are about, especially in the States. They're not interested in poor old George Floyd. Are pushing their own agendas. They want anarchy. So anyway, support the police. Be good to each other. Look after your family. Kakitano.